the tone, 8 o'clock. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you an unusual true story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here's our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tonight, we bring you a true story about one of the most famous women of all time. Her name, Manya Skordowska. You never heard of her, huh? Well, now, perhaps you know her better under her married name, Marie Curie. Ha. Well, Madame Curie, the co-discoverer of radium. The only person, man or woman, ever to be awarded two Nobel Prizes. Most of us know the story of her life with Pierre Curie, but there's another story. The tale of, of a young Polish governess who fought tyranny and ignorance and, and even her own heart to follow the destiny that was to change Manya Skodowska into Marie Curie. Now, here is Frank Goss. When you want to remember your friends, there's one way to be sure the card you send receives an extra welcome. Look for that identifying hallmark on the back when you select it. For words to express your feelings and designs to express your good taste, let the hallmark on the back be your guide. For that hallmark tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the new color picture, Knights of the Round Table, in Cinemascope, Starring Robert Taylor, Ava Gardner, and Mel Ferrer. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Poland. The last quarter of the 19th century, shadowed then as now by the terrors of Russian occupation. The agents of the Tsar are everywhere. Even knowledge is a Russian monopoly. To 18-year-old Manya Skodowska, the future seems bleak. Remarkable enough that she should have graduated with honors from the gymnasium. To go on to the university to become a scientist, impossible. No women allowed, no Poles allowed. There's really only one respectable career open to a Polish girl with too much education and too little money. So, Pana Sklodowska, you seek a position as a governess, eh? Yes, Countess. Mm. You seem very young. Have you any experience? Well, I, I've done some tutoring in Warsaw. Uh, here are my letters of recommendation, uh, my academic credits. <laughs> I've brought enough of them. Ah, uh, says here that you are proficient in five languages. Russian, Polish, French, German, English. Oh, in the case of English, not quite proficient, I'm afraid. Ah, it's a waste of time reading references. They're favorable or you wouldn't have brought them. Turn around. What? Turn around. Ah, there. You're really quite a pretty girl, even in that dress. It's the only one I have. I presumed as much. Are your parents living? Only my father. He teaches in a boys' school at Warsaw. He was at the university, but there was a directive from Moscow. No Poles permitted on the faculty. Poor but proud. Quite typical background. I suppose you're looking for a husband. Oh, no, Countess. Uh, let's see. There are quite a few young men in the district. You should find some suitable prospects. I'm afraid you don't understand, Countess. I plan to continue my studies to go to France, to the Sorbonne. Do you? Oh, I, I know it sounds fantastic, but my sister and I have worked it all out. You see, she's there now, working to be a doctor. We pooled our savings, and I shall send her half of my wages, or more if I can. 
And then, when she's graduated, begun to practice, it will be my turn. I shall take a degree in chemistry, perhaps mathematics as well. I don't believe you. Oh, it's, it's the truth, whether you believe it or not. You may think so now, but I know governesses. In a year, less perhaps, you'll be ready to marry the first man who asks you, even if he has two heads. And a good thing, too. <laughs> chemistry. Mathematics. <laughs> Come in. I came to see if you'd survived. What? Your meeting with the dragon. Oh, the countess. Who else? Hmm. No wounds. You must have used a magic charm. <laughs> I'm Bronka Karlevsky. I live here. Oh, are you related to the Zlotsky? A distant cousin. But I'm to marry Casimir, the eldest grandson, when he graduates from the university. You'll like Casimir. Girls always do. Hmm. Come to think of it, Casimir might like you, too. He's rather the intellectual type. <laughs> That's why I'm marrying him. Opposites attract you now. Sometimes they explode. What? Oh, do they? Mind if I sit on the bed? Oh, please do, Panna Korolevsky. Oh, no, no, no. You must call me Bronka. And I shall call you Manya. Oh, it's so nice to have someone to talk to. Shuki is a hundred miles from nowhere and dull, dull, dull. Of course, it's different when Casimir comes home for the holidays. There are parties there, music, sleigh rides in the moonlight, dancing. Oh, you haven't hung out your dancing frocks yet. Well, I'm afraid... Don't tell me you didn't bring any. No, I, I didn't bring any. Oh, lucky thing I mentioned it then. Now you'll have time to send for some before the holidays. On most estates, the governess would never be allowed to dance with the guests. But it's different at Chuki. We're really very broad-minded. remember it, Monty. I can't. Eight, perhaps. That's right. Eight. No more French today. Please. Oh, all right, Anger. Suppose we read a story together. Here. Now you start. I can't. This is in Polish. Well, you, you haven't been taught to read Polish, Anger? No. At the school in the village, the teacher said it was a decadent dialect. He said we must all speak Russian now. But you, you do know about Poland. About Stefan Batori and Kosciusko? Uh-uh. In school, they only told us about the Tsar. But you aren't a Russian, Anger. You're a Pole. I... I guess so. Would you like to learn about your country? About Poland? Sure. Can I? Oh, of course. And how about the other children? The ones in the village? Would they like it, too? You mean a sort of special school all about Poland? Oh, not a school, exactly. More of a club. We could meet down at the summer house. A secret club that nobody will ever know about except the members. What will we call ourselves, Manya? I know. The Poland Club. Yes, Anger. I like that name. <laughs> Anger, tell the club about Stanislav August. Stanislav August Panitowski elected King of Poland in 1764. He was very intelligent, a patron of the arts, and he tried very hard to prevent the partition of Poland. Oh, that's very good, Anger. All right, children, that's all for now. It's nearly supper time. Meetings adjourned. <laughs> I forgot to mention that Stanislas August was also a coward. What? Who? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not a government inspector. So you're the mania everyone at Chuki's talking about. I know. You're Casimir. You weren't expected until tonight. Do you realize what will happen to you if they ever find out that you're running a clandestine school? Do you realize what will happen to Poland if there are no clandestine schools? Hmm. The Countess said you had character for once she was right. Look, Manya, I've been working on some articles for the secret press. I'd like you to read them. Oh, I, I really know very little about style. And a great deal about freedom. I'll give them to you at the party tonight. Well, 
I, I'm afraid I shan't be there. Well, why not? It's for my homecoming. I want you there. I insist. I, I'm sorry, but it's impossible, and I have other plans. I see. Well, in that case, of course, I don't insist. He's a very lucky fellow. Tell him I said so. All right, Casimir. I'll tell him. Then add half a gram of sulfur. The result should be... Oh, oh dear. I must have made a mistake. Caesar, wait! Manya, you're all right. Uh, I think so, but it's the third time I've bungled this experiment. Oh, good. Well, you're ready to leave now, then. I've got a carriage waiting. We'll go for a ride. No, no, I, I couldn't. And besides, what about Brunka? Oh, she's danced herself dizzy with all the young men in the district. Besides, uh, 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 the time her head clears will be back. Oh, it sounds pleasant, but... Well, you see, my dog, Caesar, and I are working on an experiment, too. And we need your help. Oh, what sort of experiment? To find out what Manya Sklodowska looks like when she laughs. Well, it's about time. Oh, Brunka, I, I, I was at the summer house and experimenting. Something exploded. Obviously. Don't bother explaining, Manya. I know where you were. And with whom. Oh, please, Bronco. It's late and I'm upset. C couldn't we discuss it in the morning? There's nothing to discuss. Of course, I realize it isn't really important. Casimir Slotsky is hardly the type to become serious over a little nobody of a governess. But I don't intend to take any chances. You're not to be alone with him. Ever again. Do you understand me, Manya? You'd better go, Bronco. Oh, yes. I almost forgot. Lots of unusual things have been going on since you came to Shuki. That children's club, for instance. Get out, Bronka. They tell me it's extremely cold in Siberia this time of year. You could try it and see. You're always interested in experiments. Get out. Good night, Manya. Have pleasant dreams. But not of Casimir. <laughs> In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Last night, my little niece asked me a question which is pretty important to her. Uncle Frank, she said, do you think the policeman at our school crossing would like a valentine from me? Well, I said I was sure he would because a valentine would let him know how much he is appreciated. And even as I answered her, this thought occurred to me. Children enjoy being thoughtful of others. All they need is a bit of encouragement to turn their little acts of thoughtfulness into a lifelong custom. This week, many of you will take your boys and girls valentine shopping. And when you do, I suggest you visit a store where Hallmark cards are sold. You see, the makers of Hallmark cards have learned through the years exactly what kind of valentines little folks like to send. There are amusing ones just made to drop into a valentine box at school, bright ones to delight aunts and uncles and grandparents, and special Hallmark valentines for the most important people of all, mother and dad. Yes, and here's a tip for you. You can choose all the juvenile valentines you'll want to send the youngsters this year from the big Hallmark collection. Remember, the Hallmark on the back means, as always, you cared enough to send the very best. years, Madame Marie Curie was to be honored throughout the civilized world for the courage which made possible her great scientific achievements. But this same courage never shone more brightly than when a young governor, still known by a Polish name of Manya Skoldowska, she risked imprisonment 
under the harsh laws of the Russian occupation to teach a handful of village children their national heritage of freedom. And even her marriage to Professor Pierre Curie was not to erase from her heart and spirit the scars of her first love for the idealistic young nobleman, Kazimir Zlotsky. I'm thinking of you as well as Kazimir Manya. This midwinter madness will bring you nothing but pain and suffering. Oh, yes, yes, I, I've thought of that. Oh, at least you're still able to think. It's a hopeful sign. Kazimir's holiday ends soon. Perhaps it would be advisable for you to remain in seclusion until then. I should regret having to find a new governess at this season. So I fancy, would you? Very well, Countess. You have my promise. A sensible decision, my dear. By spring, this grand amour will be nothing but a memory. As to that, Countess, I cannot promise. <laughs> The earth is spinning anger, changing from day to night, winter to spring to... I know it's hard to concentrate in spring anger, but the lesson is on the blackboard, not out the window. Well, what is it you find so intriguing? A dog. There are lots of dogs at Shuki. This one's a red dog. He looks like Caesar. Casimir Caesar? Oh, it's not possible. It, it's too soon. Anger, there's a picture of the solar system in my astronomy book. Suppose you fetch it. It, it has a green cover. It is Casimir's dog, isn't it? I, I didn't notice. Oh, yes, you did. That's why you're getting rid of me. Don't worry, Manya. I'll walk very slowly. It's damp in those bushes, Casimir. You better come in. Manya... You're early. No, late, months late. Does the Countess know? No, I'm not staying. I just came to fetch something. I'd left it, Chucky, something I need very badly. Oh. My heart. Oh, it's no use, Casimir. Believe me. We'll leave tonight, Man. You go away somewhere, anywhere. Krakow, Warsaw. We'll have to give up the old dreams, mine of being Count Slutsky, yours of science. But we'll find a new dream. Together. Well? All right, Casimir. We'll find a new dream together. aren't you at lessons? I had to run an errand. Do you mind? What are you holding behind your back? Nothing. Let me see it. <laughs> Has Manya taken to gnawing bones now, I wonder? Not for Manya, so it's for Caesar. Caesar? Uh, I mean, Sasha. You know, the big wolfhound. He, he looked hungry. You said it was for Caesar. Did I? My tongue slipped. I made a mistake. Did you? Casimir's here, isn't he? Isn't he? No. You're hurting me, Bronca. He came to fetch her. They're going to elope, aren't they? I haven't seen him. I told you. I made a mistake. All right, Hunger. I believe you. You made a mistake. Open in the name of the Tsar. Well? Guard the Countess Slotsky. I am. There's a girl living in this house. Manya Sklodowska. What do you want with her? We have a report that she's taken advantage of her position here to use your estate as a center of revolutionary activities. I regret, Countess, that my men will be required to search your house. That will not be necessary. There is a shack behind the milking shed. She's made it into a sort of laboratory. Does experiments. She is there now. My respects, Countess. You'll soon be rid of your little traitor. About face! Oh, 
Whose report, Branga? Yours. Casimir's here. She was going to run off with him. Now, tonight. So? She has no right. She's a thief. A common thief. You promised me. Casimir promised. I am the one. I am going to be the Countess Slotsky. I think not, Bronka. There have been Slotskys here at Shuki for 700 years. They were Poles, every one of them, and proud. I do not think they would be pleased to have you share their name. I'll go up to Manya now. You will wait here and keep silent. Countess. You know why the Cossacks came? Yes, it was bound to happen sooner or later. I'll be ready when they come back. Ready? Ready for what? To give myself up, of course. Oh, nonsense. But, but if you protect me, you'll be an accomplice. So much the better. I've always thought myself admirably suited to a life of crime. Where is that moonstruck grandson of mine? The summer house. He has a carriage waiting. Where will you go? I don't know. We hadn't decided. Ah, you will have to leave Poland. That much is sure now. With God's help, you should get to the Prussian border by morning. I presume trains run from there to that ridiculous university of yours. The one where women study chemistry. Oh, yes, Oh, but... here, here. Take this purse. That should get you there, both of you. Although I can't for the life of me see why Casimir should want a wife whose chief ambition seems to be to, to blow herself up. Uh, well, don't just stand there, Manya. Casimir is waiting. Oh, Countess, I, I, I don't know what to say. I... I suggest that you say goodbye. That is, unless you still intend to turn yourself over to those Cossacks. Oh, goodbye, Countess. And God keep you and bless you. Go aboard now, Casimir. Do you... Do you have everything you need? Everything but one thing. In my heart. Manya. Manya, change your mind. Let me come with you to Paris. We can be married. There's nothing to stop us now. No, no, Casimir. Your future is here in Poland. To be the Count Zlotsky. To help the fight for freedom. And mine? Who knows? I shall do what I can. The Russians won't be here always. You'll come back to Poland. No, Casimir. Manya Slodowska will never come back. And someday, you may meet a woman with her face. But she'll have a different life. A different name, even. Manya, I... I'm not Manya anymore. My home is France now. And there I shall be called Marie. Goodbye. Goodbye, Casimir. To you, to Poland, and to Manya. Yes, the name of Manya Skoldowska has been almost forgotten. But Manya herself has become immortal. For in France, warm by the sun of freedom, the seed of greatness that was within Manya Skoldovska grew and blossomed, bring forth the world remolding discoveries of Madame Marie Curie. Perhaps tonight, perhaps somewhere in Poland or Romania or, or Czechoslovakia, Another mania fights to keep unshriveled a mind and spirit that might serve or even save mankind. We can but pray that she, like Marie Cooney, will soon find soil and sunlight.
Have you ever known anyone who didn't get a thrill out of an unexpected Valentine? It's almost magic the way a white square envelope delivered on February 14th can light up the gloomiest day. And you know, choosing Valentines is just as much fun as receiving them, especially if you visit a store where Hallmark cards are sold. You'll find there's a Hallmark Valentine to fit the personality of everyone dear to you. Humorous styles, sentimental ones, and old-fashioned lacy Valentines that recall the memories of bygone days. Of course, you'll want to select a Hallmark Valentine for the person you love most. A Valentine with a special message that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And then you can choose Valentines for all the others, your brother in service, your aunt in Maine, or the neighbor who helped take care of you when you were ill. Yes, it's a joy to make Valentine's Day a day of loving kindness all the way around. And when the hallmark is there, on the back of each and every one, it will tell your friends you care enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. Frank, uh, your speaking of the joy Valentine's give to everyone reminds me of some lines of Byron's I read a long time ago. I remember them, though. They made such an impression on me that I do remember them to this day. They go like this, I think. All who joy would win must share it. Happiness was born a twin. <laughs> Now, isn't there a lot of truth in that line? Happiness was born a twin. I believe that's why so many folks find that Hallmark cards play an important part in their lives. They let us share happiness, not only on special days like Valentine's Day, but, but every day, all the year through. Don't you agree with that, Frank? I do indeed, Mr. Barrymore. Yeah. And now, before we say goodnight for our Hallmark Hall of Fame, why don't you tell us some of the treats we have in store for the coming weeks, Frank? Next week, Mr. Barrymore, we'll tell the exciting story of the famous inventor, Lee DeForest. Uh -huh. And our special guest will be Amos and Andy. <laughs> On February 14th, we will present the true story of Mary Todd Lincoln, starring Miss Jane Wyman. Oh, that sounds delightful, Frank. And by the way, I believe you have a special announcement. Here's an important announcement from the makers of Hallmark Cards. Boys and girls of high school age can win big cash prizes for themselves and for their schools in the Hallmark Hall of Fame contest. See the February 2nd issue of Scholastic Magazine. Uh, uh, until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer director is William Prude. Our script tonight was written by Robert Yale Libet. Featured in our cast were Betty Harford, Mary McGovern, Paula Winslow, Charlotte Lawrence, Shepard Menken, and Paul Dubois. You are also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television every Sunday, starring Miss Sarah Churchill. This is Frank Goss, saying goodnight to you until next week at the same time, when we'll present the exciting story of Lee DeForest. On February 14th, the true story of Mary Todd Lincoln, starring Miss Jane Wyman. And in the weeks to come, true stories from the lives of Simon Bolivar, Bernard Baruch, and the story of Nurse Edith Cavell, starring Miss Helen Hayes, on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.